Today we're going to go over a feature that is typically turned off by default in DaVinci Resolve. If you're ever working in a project, or let's say you're working not so much in a project, but you're working on a series or you're working for a particular YouTube channel or whatever it may be, where you're constantly using the same rendered out elements, music, logo stings, whatever it may be, you're using these same assets over and over again with all your projects. A typical thing that you would end up doing is constantly bringing those all into DaVinci Resolve for that particular project that you're working on. And a lot of the times that's a couple extra steps. It might not take long to do, but uh, depending on how many files you actually have to bring in, that is uh, tends to be a pain in the butt. Well, there actually is something in DaVinci Resolve that will always have those files at the ready in your media pool. And that is referred to as a power bin. Um, there is something that's sort of similar it's called a power grade. And how a power grade works is pretty much you can make a bunch of different grades on the color page and then you can store that in your database file. So anytime you open up another project, you automatically have that color grade that you can apply. Almost like a LUT, but you have the flexibility of using all the different nodes on the color page. There's a particular like color grade that you like. You can always implement that into all of your projects, but you know, the lighting situation might be a little different. So having the flexibility of all the different nodes to adjust that to work with whatever the, the overall uh, lighting situation. And so that was always a amazing thing. And I believe I have a video on YouTube going over power grades and why to use those over LUTs if you have the ability to. We're now we're on the edit page and we want all of our different assets, all of our music, all of our images, all of our overlays, all of these things that we are always bringing into our project we want them to automatically already be there so we don't have to do that. All we have to do when it's time to edit is bring in whatever that particular uh, episode is going to have, right? That's custom to it. So let me show you how power bins work and how to turn them on because they're not typically on by default. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to let you know about my website, jrtv.com, where we have hundreds of different templates available for DaVinci Resolve 17, 16, and 15. All of them are backwards compatible with the newest version of DaVinci Resolve. If you haven't taken a look, the selection of templates is pretty diverse with everything that you would typically think when you think templates, everything from titles, transitions, infographs, logo stings, slideshows, video displays, video effects, compositing elements, as well as a bunch of color pre preset tools specifically for DaVinci Resolve's color page. If you're interested in taking a look for yourself, there's a link in the description. So let's jump over to my screen. And over here, this is what your DaVinci Resolve is going to look like. You would typically bring some footage in, but let's talk about the bins themselves. So in the media pool, we're going to open this up and this is probably how yours is going to look something like that by default. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to view. And then if we come down to view, we have show power bins. So if we click the show power bins, we'll get this little guy here. Now, this guy has all of my stuff for you for a YouTube video, right? So if I take a look in here, it has my assets. And then here I have graphics, which you've probably seen this before. And this is just a uh, image sequence of that button. And then I have whoops. And then I also have the sound that you know, goes with that. Obviously, this isn't the correct uh, frame rate. This is actually supposed to be at 30 frames. So if we were to re-add that on there, there we are. So that is what I typically would have in my videos for my subscribe button, right? The real cool thing, like I was saying initially, is any project I open. So if I go in and we open a new project, project 21, and our power bins are there. We don't have to bring that stuff in. So it saves a ton of time if, if you're working on any type of series, if you're working for, uh, I don't know, a church and you always have specific overlays that you always use. If you're working on a YouTube channel, you always have a bunch of overlays, you're doing whatever it may be. Anytime you're using the same stuff, you can throw it in a power bin and it's tied to your database. So, um, by default, it DaVinci Resolve automatically makes a database. If you've always just seen this or you've seen it like this, uh, you just click this little button here and then you can make different databases. And uh, you can have different database files for different types of projects. You, you can split up databases for a ton of different reasons. Um, and there's different types of databases and that's a whole nother video. But just note that your power bins are tied to that 
particular database. So if you were to make another database, you could have a different set of power bins, maybe for a different project, whatever you may, may be doing, and you can just simply just jump back and forth between them. But the whole idea is that you don't have to consistently add those in. The other thing that I do wanna say here is that we're adding links to the media. We're not actually bringing the media into the database. We're not taking those files and storing them somewhere else. So wherever they're stored on your system, just note that DaVinci Resolve still has to have access to that location. So if you work off of some type of external storage device that you disconnect and reconnect, you add the stuff into these power bins that was on that storage device, you're not going to have access to it unless it's on a storage device that DaVinci Resolve can access when DaVinci Resolve is open. So I would typically say like if you have network storage, put it on there and then put it into your bins. And it's, the way to add it, it's just like you're adding anything to any bin. You create a bin, you, you say new bin, and then you just drag the media in there. It will then uh, put the link in a, a power bin to wherever it is stored. So if it's on network storage, if it's on your computer, you could store it onto some type of external storage device but it just has to be something that is connected, right? If it's not connected, DaVinci Resolve can't access the source material. And this is just an easy way so that you don't always have to go scrounging for that source material to add it into your project because it's already added in via the power bin, so. But yeah, that's pretty much the extent of power bins. Um, there really isn't a ton to it. I just wanted to show you that you do have the ability to save a lot of time and energy when you're working on a series for a YouTube channel or whatever uh, it may be where you're constantly using the same material over and over again. Um, so you don't have to go around and looking for it. It really is a way to save time and a couple of clicks uh, when you're opening up your next project. So with that being said, I think that concludes the little mini tutorial on how to set up power bins. Hopefully you learned something in this one. Until the next one, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.